Freddy is one lucky guy. He works at a chocolate factory as a night guard. Once, he was checking the factory as usual. He noticed that someone had stolen several boxes with exclusive chocolate candies. The next morning, Freddy questioned three suspects. Jason, a pastry cook, said that he'd finished his shift at 7 p.m. and gone home right away. His wife couldn't confirm that he stayed indoors all night. Harry, a delivery guy, said, I don't eat chocolate at all. Even the smell of it gives me a severe rash. And Peter, a cleaner, said, Yesterday, I was cleaning the warehouse. I found one chocolate candy on the floor and ate it. I'm so sorry. Please don't fire me. Who is the thief? Harry. He's standing in a room with a bowl of melted chocolate without any protection. He would have a rash if his allergy was real. Another working day at the chocolate factory. Jason decided to prank Freddy and covered a raw chicken egg with a layer of chocolate. Then he wrapped it and put it among real chocolate eggs on a tray. When Jason brought the chocolate eggs, Freddy spotted the fake one immediately. Can you figure it out? The real chocolate eggs are hollow inside, so they were rolling all over the tray when Jason was walking. But the raw egg is heavier, and it didn't move much. Well, Freddy decided to pay Jason back. He dressed up as a ghost to scare him. But suddenly, several real ghosts appeared in the room. Can you figure out which of these ghosts is Freddy? This guy over here, he's the only ghost who is not transparent at all. One evening, the factory was celebrating its anniversary. The management organized a party. All employees participated in a karaoke competition. Most of them all sang incredibly well and received gifts and flowers. But only two of the best singers, Nancy and Betsy, made it to the final. They prepared to face each other in one more round. But suddenly, Betsy fell to the floor, unconscious. Doctors claimed that she had been poisoned. But all the participants of the competition had eaten exactly the same food. Besides, the police checked the dishes, and they were okay. Can you guess what happened? Someone poisoned Betsy's flowers. Next day, Freddy came to work as usual. He looked around and exclaimed, Eh, wait a minute! Who's brought a cat to the chocolate factory? No pets are allowed here! Can you see any animals? Here it is! The cat got scared and ran away to another room. Freddy followed it. Can you spot the cat now? It's hiding over there. And again, Freddy failed to catch the cat. It ran out of the building and hid in the garden. Can you help the guy find the cat? Ah, the poor animal is over there. Freddy caught the cat and found a small note attached to its collar. It had contact information. Freddy called the cat owner, but no one answered the phone. So, after work, Freddy took the cat and went to the address mentioned in the note. It was a creepy castle. The door was locked and required a password. Can you help Freddy crack the code using this hint? The password is rainbow. A gloomy old man greeted Freddy inside the castle. Freddy expected that he would thank him for bringing the cat back. But the old man began to laugh evilly and locked all the ways out. Then he said, If you manage to complete three tasks I give you, you will get a million dollars. But if you fail, you'll stay in my castle forever. Here's the first task. Help me find my glasses among all these vegetables. 
Can you help Freddy? Here they are. The next task from the old man was to cook a potion and do it in the correct order. He gave Freddy this recipe. Can you help the guy? First of all, you gotta put curry. Then go for blueberries to make the potion look greenish. And finally, add tomatoes to make the potion look brown. As for these vegetables, Freddy doesn't need them. And the third task is to find a book in this messy room. Can you see it? It's half hidden inside the sofa. The old man gave Freddy his money, showed him the exit, and disappeared. But when Freddy tried to leave, he realized that the door was locked. It had a combination lock. Freddy found this mysterious note nearby. He has to get this right or he might stay trapped for a long time. What code will open the door? Two, three, six, one. Each number corresponds to the number of circles in the first set of numbers. Now, Freddy was free to go. As soon as Freddy got out of the creepy castle, he decided to quit his job and go on a trip around the globe. First of all, he took a flight to Spain. On board the plane, he met Gloria. He asked what country she was from. Instead of answering, Gloria showed him this puzzle. Can you guess the country? That's right, she's from Ireland. Then Gloria asked Freddy what country he was from, and he showed her this puzzle. Can you guess his country? Cuba. Freddy landed in Madrid and went for a walk. He hadn't rented any hotel in advance, so he just wandered around the city, searching for a nice place to stay. Suddenly, Freddy noticed this cute little hotel and entered it. Big mistake. Why? See this zombie in the window? This place doesn't look safe. As soon as Freddy entered the creepy hotel, the door slammed behind his back. The guy saw three doors leading to freedom. Venomous spiders were crawling behind the first door. Behind the second door, arrows were flying at head height. And behind the third door, there was a black hole. Which door should Freddy choose? Can you help him escape? He should choose the second door. He can crawl under the arrows. After his adventure, Freddy decided to have lunch in the local cafe. But something's definitely wrong here. Can you figure out what it is? Look at this window. The view of the street is upside down. The waiter came over to Freddy to get his order. But suddenly, a woman at the next table began to shout, Help me! Someone has put cockroaches in my soup! The cafe manager questioned three suspects. The cook said that he had prepared the soup as usual. It was okay when he passed the dish to the waiter. The waiter said he hadn't touched the soup. He just served it to the woman and switched to another client, Freddie. The woman's husband said, I wasn't there when my wife got the soup. I was washing my hands in the bathroom. Can you tell who's guilty? No one. Take a look at the ceiling. The cockroaches crawled out of the ventilation and several of them fell into the lady's soup. Freddy used a special app to rent a luxury apartment in Madrid. He found three options that he really liked. Mariana offered a cozy two-story studio with a beautiful view. 
Diego had a penthouse near a park. And Camilla offered a high-tech villa. Which option should Freddy choose? This penthouse has a cracked glass roof, which is extremely unsafe. As for the third option, see the Eiffel Tower? Camilla's high-tech villa is in Paris, not in Madrid. So, Freddy should choose the first studio. Freddy invited Mariana for a walk in the park. They walked a lot and got very tired. They decided to lie down on the grass and rest. Freddy woke up an hour later. Mariana had disappeared. Freddy started looking for her. Half an hour later, he fell into a big pit. It began to rain. The guy realized that the pit was going to get flooded. That was a big problem. Freddy couldn't swim. He found some stuff in the pit. A rope, a ball, and a bucket. How can Freddy get out? The ball will float up to the surface. And so will Freddy if he holds on to it. Freddy kept looking for Mariana. He came across a wizard's castle. The wizard had caught the girl and turned her into a frog. Freddy had to help her. The guy and the Mariana the frog found the wizard's book of potions. It described all the necessary antidotes. But first, the guys needed to understand which potion the wizard had used on Mariana. Freddy looked through the book. The first recipe included a slice of pumpkin, a slice of green apple, an orange wedge, and half a kiwi. The second recipe required a chamomile petal, three garlic cloves, and half of a red apple. The third potion should contain an orange wedge, a garlic clove, a banana peel, and a chamomile petal. Which potion did the wizard use? Take a look at the ingredients on the shelves. They only match the third recipe. Freddy helped Mariana turn back into a human. The wizard got very angry and teleported Freddy to jail. The guy was desperate. He had no idea how to escape. Suddenly, a creepy man opened the door and said, Come on, I'm going to help you escape. Freddy followed him, but he slipped, fell to the floor, and hit his head. Freddy woke up in a pit. He didn't remember how he got there. If he went to the left, he would end up in the bathroom. If he went to the right, he would have to crawl through a tunnel filled with toxic waste that was leading outside. Which way should he choose? Freddy should go to the right. If he chooses the left corridor, he will end up in jail again. Look, this bathroom is on the territory of the jail. Freddy escaped, took a shower, and called Mariana right away. The wizard picked up the phone and said, I have created enough evil clones of Mariana. (laughs) I don't need her anymore. You can take her home now. Freddy rushed back to the wizard's castle and saw four Marianas. Can you help him find the real girl? This Mariana has claws instead of nails. She looks like a werewolf. This one has very sharp teeth and ears. She's probably a vampire. This lady has scales on her face. She's a mermaid. So the real Mariana is over there. Look at these two people. Can you guess which one of them is just dressed up and is not a woman in reality? It's this one here, the one in the pink dress. Look closer. She's blonde, but has dark hair on her arms. Also, you can see some naturally dark hair slipping under the wig. Okay, let's try to find some more imposters. There are two pregnant women. Can you tell which one isn't really pregnant? It must be this one. She has a big belly. But her choice of high heels is very questionable. Look at these two. One of them is a mummy that escaped from ancient Egypt. Don't ask me how. It doesn't really matter. Just find the mummy. What's your choice?
It's this one. Look at the ankle. There's a piece of bandage slipping out of the pants. Dira came to a hospital for an x-ray. Two doctors are ready to accept her, but one of them isn't a real doctor. Take a close look at them. Who's not a real doctor here? It's this man here. See, he looks nothing like the person in the photo on his badge. He must have stolen the uniform. Mrs. Cook left for a business trip, and three of her daughters stayed at home by themselves. When Mrs. Cook returned the next day, she found her car crashed. Obviously, one of her daughters had taken it and had crashed it by accident, but none of the three took the blame. Sage said that she hadn't left the house, Leora said that her friend had picked her up for school that day. Amaya said that she had taken the bus. Who crashed the car? Look inside the car. There's a purse. If you were attentive, you could have noticed that the day Mrs. Cook left, Amaya had this purse. So it was her who had crashed the car. Nea woke up on a Saturday morning after a long and hard week. She was very hungry, so she decided to make herself breakfast. Nea had a dozen eggs. She broke three eggs, fried three, and ate three. How many eggs are left? There are nine eggs left. Nea broke, fried, and ate the exact same three eggs. Esme was walking through the forest and got lost. After hours of wandering around, she found a witch's house. She walked in, pet a cat, and asked the witch to take her home. The witch was making a new potion and asked Esme to give her a plant from the shelf. Esme walked there, but there were five of them. Which one? she asked. Not the one right in the middle, and not the smallest one. Also, don't take the one that's next to the pink flower. So, which one does she need? That's the one on the very left then, or the pink flower itself. But in that case, wouldn't the witch just say so? Probably. She seems satisfied, so Esma is going back home this time. Mova was in a local park and noticed a purse. Someone must have forgotten it, so she took it to Lost and Found. They accepted it and said they would give it back to the owner. At the end of the day, three women came in and demanded the purse back, each stating that the purse belonged to them. Take a look inside the purse and decide to whom it really belongs. Look, there's lipstick in the purse. There's just one woman who's wearing lipstick of the same color, and it's this one. So the purse must belong to her. Let's stick around in Lost and Found for a while. There are more things to give back to their owners, like this wallet, for example. There are three people claiming that it belongs to them, but which one is the real owner? Look, there's an ID card. It has a photo of this guy, so it must be his wallet. There's a backpack, and three people are demanding it. You can take a look inside. Who do you think the backpack belongs to? There's a jacket that matches this girl's trainers perfectly. It must belong to her. Can you pick the owner of this purse out of these three people? Look, there's a charm on the purse that says Ella. This girl in the middle has a necklace with a pendant saying Ella too. It must be her purse. Yvonne and Liana are exploring a forest right outside their town and find an abandoned hotel. Of course, they walk in to look around. When they walk into one of the rooms, a cage falls and traps them inside. 
There are three potions. Each of them will only last 10 minutes. If they drink the purple one, they will turn into the first animal they can see. If they drink the blue one, they'll be able to fly. If they drink the orange one, they'll switch bodies with each other. Which potion should they drink? Look, there's a little mouse in the room. If they drink the purple potion, they can turn into a mouse and will be small enough to escape through the cage. What they do afterward is another matter. Inez was studying in a boarding school. She often stayed in the library till late because, well, she didn't want to spend time with her roommates. One day, she found a dungeon. Of course, she walked in to see what was there. She found a pile of old books and a journal filled with weird symbols. Can you help her decode the name of the person this journal belongs to? For each letter, there's a unique border and dot combination. To decode, Inez just has to find the respected letter. If she does it right, she should get the name Marion. A group of friends were partying on a Friday night in a neighborhood. The next morning, Mr. Johnson came to his little shop and found that the glass door was broken. Nothing was stolen, but he reported to the police because he wanted the glass replaced. The police found fingerprints of three people on the bottle, Nova, Ayla, and Eamon. Which of the friends threw the bottle into the glass door? It was Eamon. His fingerprints are upside down and are located on the bottle's neck. This means that he wasn't holding the bottle to drink, but upside down to throw it. A group of cyborgs arrived on Earth to study humans' behavior. The police found out about it and got concerned. They want to track every cyborg and interrogate them. Let's help them find a couple of cyborgs in disguise. Look at these two people here. One of them isn't a human, but which one? It's this guy with a tail. He wasn't careful enough to dress up properly. Here's another pair. They both seem pretty usual, but one of these women is a cyborg. Can you spot her? It must be this one. Her eye color is orange, which is not humanly possible. Look. There are two suspicious people in the grocery store. Oh no, there's just one cyborg. Which one? It's this one, the one with the cyborg's leg. Oops, he forgot to cover it up. Then the police moved on to different houses. One officer took a look at these two houses today. In which house does a cyborg live? Look, there's gasoline on the kitchen counters. It's definitely a cyborg's place of residence. You're doing great. Now, look at these two bathrooms. Can you spot anything suspicious and find the bathroom that doesn't belong to a real human? Look, there's a wrench instead of a toothbrush. I bet that's the one. A young actress, Chanel, was staying at a hotel in Miami. Suddenly, she screamed! Detective Callum was drinking a cocktail right by her balcony, so he walked in and asked her what had happened. The girl looked scared. A man dressed in black just broke into my room. I heard some scratches in the keyhole, and then he opened it and grabbed my hand. I screamed, and he ran away. Detective Callum didn't believe her. Why? The door of the room opens inwards, and it's loaded with boxes now. If someone had opened it and walked in, the boxes would have been pushed out of the way. Luna wanted to go to the party her classmate was throwing, but her mother didn't let her go. Still, she felt bad, so she said, 
If you need to get out of your room for a while, you can go visit your grandparents at their geese farm for the weekend. Luna agreed. But she decided to trick her mom. Instead of going to her grandparents, Luna went to the party. When she got home, her mother asked her how the weekend had been. Luna replied that she had a great time, spent a lot of time in the garden, and was responsible for feeding the chickens every day. Her mom knew that she was lying. How? It wasn't a chicken farm, but a geese farm. If Luna had really been at the farm, she wouldn't have confused them.